So we're going to do a hands-on workshop uh, showing you SODA, how it, works, how it works and how it can be used to detect data quality issues. Really glad to see so many people here showing up. Really appreciate you taking the time. And I assume that data quality issues is something that you've experienced since you're here. So uh, that's, that's great. So in terms of an agenda, um, really short welcome part where we introduce ourselves and the company. And then I'll go over some of the key components in the platform and how they kind of work together. Uh, and then uh, Matisse and I are going to take you through kind of a um, like a live workshop in terms of how it could be to use soda in a day-to-day -day, um, situation. But to start with, uh, my name is Alvin. I'm a solution engineer with Soda. I've been with Soda for about a year and a half. Um, so sales engineer, that means that I help out with uh, technical questions, eval. So if you schedule a demo, I'm usually the person on the other end of that. And I uh, would also like to introduce uh, Matisse. Yes. Uh, uh, hi, everyone. My name is Matisse. I'm doing all things uh, product at Soda. So I've been here around uh, one, one year and a half as well. So we're more than uh, 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 happy to show you how uh, Soda looks like. And Soda as a company, we've been around for about uh, four years, uh, mainly spread across Europe, headquartered in Belgium. Um, so moving on to the platform then. So we think there are three main pillars that needs to be there in order to achieve good data quality. And starting with the first one, which is finding problems out automatically. And what that means from a product perspective is that you can take soda, you point that towards a data source, and then we'll figure out what we can figure out automatically. So in terms of features, that means things like schema changes, automatically detecting schema changes, uh, also data freshness, and also being able to apply time series anomaly detection to excuse me, key metrics like row counts. So essentially point that towards the data source and we'll figure it out for you. The second one that we think is super important is being able to align on expectations. And this goes more towards the data consumer side of things. And we think it's really important to enable, enable the consumer, so an analyst, to be able to express what good data quality means for them. And doing that in the form of a contract or an agreement that can be used as a handover point between the consumers and the producers. So it's very clear to everyone involved what good data quality should look like. The third one is around alerting and being able to manage alerts. So in its simplest form, that's just when you, when you detect something, being able to notify the correct st stakeholder in terms of what have gone wrong. So being able to send notifications using email or Slack or Teams, uh, that's built into the product. The last one is to prevent data issues. And here we're more in data engineering land. So Part, so part of Soda is an open source Python application that can very easily be incorporated into existing uh, data pipelines. And we'll talk more about that towards the, the end of the presentation. But essentially anything that can run Python can run Soda. So you can throw it into Airflow, Dragster, or trigger it from like a build server if you wanted to. So it, there's a lot of flexibility there in terms of how you can, how you can trigger Soda. Then in terms of the different building blocks. So starting, starting from the, the right here, we have Soda Core, which is the open source uh, component of this solution. And as I mentioned, it's a Python library that you can invoke uh, either as a library or as a command line tool. And what Soda Core does is that it translates the, agreement, the agreements that I mentioned earlier into optimized SQL queries that will execute on the data source in order to capture data quality metrics. So for example, percentage of missing values or number of invalid uh, product IDs. And then that is being compared against thresholds defined in the contract. And that could be a static threshold saying that, okay, no more than 5% missing values, or it could be a dynamic one. So we're looking at rolling averages over five days, or it could be based on time series anomaly detection. But once that is executed, we'll upload the results from that check to Soda Cloud. And in Soda Cloud, we store this uh, over time. And that's the feature that allows you to do change over time comparison. So like time series anomaly detection and rolling averages. And as I mentioned, Soda Core can be incorporated essentially anywhere. On the other side of things, we have the Soda Agent, uh, which is all based on Soda Core. 
but it has a wrapper around it. And this wrapper provides two key capabilities that make, <coughs> excuse me, that makes it easier to use uh, from more of a data consumer perspective. Because for these types of use cases, you're typically detached from the data pipeline. So you're gonna need scheduling. And part of the self-serve um, that, that I mentioned earlier as well is the ability to be able to create these agreements directly in Soda Cloud. So for this side of things, then the agreements will be authored and created within Soda Cloud. So we provide a powerful editor that helps you construct these checks across multiple data sources. And then that's being picked up by the Soda agent. And the Soda agent um, is, a, is a Docker container that you can run on AWS or GCP or Azure if you wanted to. And then in the end, it will result in SQL queries ran against the underlying data source. And regardless of how you trigger Soda, the results will be maintained within Soda Cloud. So Soda Cloud becomes that single pane of glass for data quality across your organization, regardless if it originates from the data pipeline or if it's more from a data consumer type use case. Then on the upper end here, uh, the green boxes. Uh, so that's more around how we fit into an existing ecosystem. So in its simplest form, uh, as I mentioned before, it is sending notifications using email and chat when a threshold has been met. It could also be ticketing and working with existing um, ticketing tools like your Jira and your ServiceNow. So our ambition is not to build a new Jira and a new ServiceNow, but we want to be able to capture the issue inside Soda and then propagate that into, into whatever ticketing system you're using, using webhooks or native uh, integrations. The third box there is the catalogs. And when it comes to catalogs, our strategy is to provide integrations to the most commonly used ones. And doing that in a way that we could augment the experience for the data stewards so that they can not only find where the data is, who's responsible, business glossary, but also get an indication in terms of, is this data actually reliable? And we provide that by retrieving the data from Soda and then pushing it to the catalogs. And as of today, we provide integration to Alation, Colibra, Casper, and mm, 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 Metaphor. And Metaphor, Metaphor. But we're building these uh, uh, on a case-by-case on a -case basis. So we have a framework for developing them so, so it, we can turn around that pretty quickly. Uh, the last one is uh, uh, BI tools and how to use BI tools together with Soda. So the use cases here is typically that uh, I mean, we provide out of the box dashboards for data quality, but sometimes our customers wants to slice and dice that data slightly differently or uh, do aggregation based on departments or whatever it might be. Uh, and that the way that they can get to the data in that case is that we provide a reporting API exposed from Soda Cloud where you can get to all the data that we collect. And one example would be uh, one of our customers, HelloFresh, they wanted to be able to measure the adoption of data quality in the different business units and they use the reporting API to kind of create a custom report based on that. So that's uh, very on a high level how things, uh, how things fit together. And, and with that, I'll hand over to Matisse that will start taking us through Soda in Action and what this actually looks like in real life. Cool. Thank you, Alvin. So we will quickly show you how you can use Soda uh, in action on like a daily basis. We will mostly cover more of the uh, the data consumer perspective. Um, so I will be playing a data analyst who will be b b building a given data product, some uh, order analytics dashboards, and then Alvin will be playing uh, the data owner uh, role. And then you will see uh, how those two personas can easily collaborate together. So here there is a quick overview of what we're going to demo. Um, so first of all, I'm going to st uh, start off in like finding some data in the given data catalog solution, showcasing our integration. Then I will be building a data product, which I will not do here on stage, of course. But uh, for that, I will build up an ag agreement as Albin uh, talked about. And then Albin will go and have a look at my agreement, will either uh, approve or re reject. And then we will go through the incident uh, re resolution uh, process to together. So if we kick it off. The first thing I will do is um, here we're using our elation instance as this is one of our uh, catalog partners where I can go and look for some order data uh, that I need to build up my data product. So I can see a lot of results. Um, there are some filters here and I want to make sure that I have data which is uh, somewhat 
covered uh, by data quality. So we have this flag here in elation to only show the data sets which have uh, uh, some sort of data quality enabled. So I can find this retails order co column here. Uh, so I can immediately see that there is a flag saying that there are some quality issues found. I can see some quick overview of uh, how many are failing, what the health score is and so forth. But I can also go and look at the details and see all of the rules which are uh, part of this are related to this given data set and what their uh, latest uh, results is. So this gives me some insights into whether I should be using this data set. Uh, as a health score is 50%, uh, it's probably not a good idea. But for the sake of the demo, we will be using this data set. Now, this same data set will also be available in Soda. So if I quickly log in um, here, there we go. You will see that the data sets are available in Soda as well. Come on. There we go. So we have this one here, the retail order ones. So here you see a full list of all of the data sets which are actively being monitored by, by, by Soda as we, we speak. So you can easily filter down this list. You can also navigate from within your catalog to the data set uh, directly, of course. <laughs> and for any of those data sets, you will see that we report on some key metrics I I immediately. The first one being how good is your quality coverage. And you see here that 17 checks are actually uh, monitoring the, this data set. Uh, and we benchmark that against everything else uh, within your environment to give you an idea of how good uh, your uh, coverage is. You can also see the health score. So you see another agreement of my colleague has been running, which actually uh, found some more data issues. So the health score even decreased more to 43%. And then we have an overview of all of the open incidents of the last 12 weeks. So here you see all is green, which means all is less good. But this visual will change to yellow, orange, uh, red, depending on how many incidents you have and how, and how long they are open for. And then, you can also see for any given data sets, you can enable the data profiling as well. So this you can easily configure for which data sets you want to do that and for which uh, you, you want even on column level. And depending on the classification of the data, so that will calculate some relevant uh, s uh, 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 statistics such as min, max, averages, and uh, 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 histogram and frequent values if uh, applicable. Now, as I will be building my data product, in this case might be uh, a, 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 a given dashboard, uh, I want to make sure that the expectations I have on top of the data I'm using are, are always validated. Meaning that I all of the insights I'm gathering out of my dashboard are fully trustful. So what I will do here is I will uh, basically create a new agreement. And I will say that I'm going to create a new sales dashboard. I'm going to use the retail one, which is actually uh, the retail order table that we have been using. So in the next step, that's where I'm going to build up my uh, agreement and I'm going to outline all of the expectations I have on top of uh, the data I'm using. So I'm going to use that one table that we uh, started using, so the retail orders one. And I'm going to start defining some simple checks. And we do that through our language called Soda CL, Soda Checks language, which has many out of the box check types. So you can see them here on the right. So they're, here are the commonly used ones, but uh, definitely not all, all, all of them. The full list is available on our docs. Um, but I can do some simple things like making sure that there is always data out within the column. Um, I can also say that I want to check uh, the, the, the schema. So here you see already two examples where uh, I want to be warned whenever anything changes in the schema. That's of course a very easy one, but you can go much more specific in saying, uh, send me a failing alert when a certain column is there, which is actually forbidden, or when certain columns are not there, or when they are at a different index than expected and so forth. Now, another one that I can do easily is a f a f freshness. So depending on the given uh, day time column or a timestamp column, you can actually go and check whether your data is still fresh. So we can do that based upon the created add column. We can say here that the data cannot be older than one day. Another one that we can do as an example is a, a reference test. So this is actually to test a referential integrity or to uh, basically check for your um, check for your um, reference data, like if you want to validate country codes as an example. 
So here we can say that for the customer ID column, um, that actually needs to come from the customer ID in my customer table, making sure that any customer I'm uh, referencing in my orders is actually a real existing customer. Now, question, question on that, Matthias. Yes, would, that, would that work across data sources as well? Yeah, indeed. So you can actually go and point. Uh, so, 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 so here we're pointing to another table uh, within, a, within the same data source, but I could also go and to do that in another data source. So I can go and compare metrics from one data source to another, right? So I can go compare the row count of my raw table in my data source one with the row count of my refined table in data source two. So that's definitely an option. Thanks for that. Now, another one is uh, validity as a simple one. So I could say I want to check the payment methods and I want to make sure that there are no v uh, invalid values there. So I'm going to say the invalid percentage needs to be zero. You see that we can use uh, valid formats which are built into Soda, like for credit card numbers, emails, and so forth. But I can also easily go and define my own valid values saying, um, I'm only expecting, let's say, wire transfer uh, and credit card as an example. And there we go. Now, uh, for all of those checks, you have uh, a, a lot of flexibility. So you can define a warning and failing thresholds for all of them. You can also define an, a business friendly name. So you can do name invalid uh, payment methods, let's say and all of this. And here in all of the examples, we're using absolute thresholding. So I'm saying a given metric needs to uh, be, be lower than or greater than or equal to a given uh, a value. But you can also use, as Alvin was saying, you can also use change over time testing where you basically compare a given uh, metric to the average of last week. Um, but you can also use our anomaly detection where you say, okay, uh, Soda, you take care of the thresholding and we will just let you know when we detect an anomaly in that given uh, metric. But here in this case, I can uh, go and start testing the check. So what it will do is it will translate this whole agreement into one highly optimized SQL query. It will push that down to the data source through the agent. It will execute it and get back uh, the results to me. So you will see that they will give you a preview of uh, the checks in one go. So if the internet wants, I made a bit of an error here, but that's fine. So I basically made a typo. I can already see it in the background. So the, the, the scan will fail here in this case. I made a typo, but if the scan is uh, succeeding, you will see a preview of all of your uh, check results. Now in the next step, it will, yeah, we're going to skip here. It will go and identify the uh, stakeholders. So here I can, uh, so Soda will do this mostly all automatically. So because we have the data ownership defined within Soda, or it is defined in your uh, the, the data catalog and we bring it in, we know who to ask to review my agreement. So here in this case, it will be uh, Albin, who is a, a locally called now data owner, but you can add multiple people as well, right? So I could add a, 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 another colleague to have a look at my agreement as well. Now the last one is, uh, or sorry, step four is who to notify. So by default, all the stakeholders will get notified. Here you see there is a default Slack channel as well. We also integrate with Microsoft Teams, for example. And here again, I can add some additional people saying, okay, my colleague Martin only wants to get the failing alerts. And then the last one is, when do you want to validate the this so agreement? So here we're using the default scan. So whenever uh, you're onboarding a data source, you can define a default scan on when to run your, your quality scan. So here it's actually uh, tomorrow morning at uh, uh, 7 a.m. It's going to run. But I could easily make a new one as well because you might consume a given dashboard or another data product at a given moment in time. And you might want to make sure that right before your data is validated so that you know that you can trust uh, the, 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 the data product. So that's what you can do here. Now, if you click save, you will see that the agreement is being created. So it's called sales dashboard here. But you can see it's pretty empty. And that's because the agreement will only run if all of the data owners have had a look at it and basically confirmed that they can fulfill my expectations. So if we quickly sign out, then Albin can uh, sh show how that works. 
Yeah, thanks, thanks, Matisse. Yeah, so when I log in and then I go to the agreements to see if there's anything I need to... Um, or the second one. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Approve, sorry, I didn't see that from here. So here, um, so the reason for having this approval step can be multiple, right? One example would be we also, if you have existing investments in SQL queries, uh, but like if, if you write a SQL query, it's a potential that you would run something that would take a long time to run. So having this approval steps really makes sense to do like a, a sanity check of a, anything that, that is being approved. So let's say uh, Matisse would never do this to me, but let's say he written a crazy SQL query, then I would reject this. But since I trust him, uh, I would go and then I would directly approve this agreement now. And then once I do, it will become, uh, it will go live and look for the specific uh, checks. Ten. And with that, uh, we're going to move over to the incidents part, right? Yep. Indeed. So, so whenever there's agreements, so actually, uh, at the data owner, you can, of course, also see what has been rewritten in the agreement to review it. Uh, but then the agreement will start running, it will start validating all of the checks, and issues might be detected. And that's when you might get an alert like uh, here as an example you see that some of the checks that we have written before are are failing so for all of those i can then go and uh, decide whether i need to create an incident so if we go to uh, the uh, the data set that we used before i can show you a good example here where we are checking the payment method one so here we said, okay, uh, I don't want like uh, more than 25% of invalid payment methods. So here you see that you can see all of the uh, 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 history of a given check. Um, so you see that the last one is actually failing because we have around 35% invalid values. And for all of those, I can then go and see the defailed row. So if I look for the payment method column, let me find it. Here it is. Um, I can see that actually most of the records here are related to PayPal. And PayPal for us is not a valid payment method. Uh, so I can also go back so I can say I, I want to have a look at this one and then I can can see the failed roles for that exact moment in time uh, as well. So let's say that we actually want to re resolve this. I can go and then create an incident. And that's in that moment in time, you make the decision to actually gather the right people to fix that issue. And that's where you then d d d decide to spend time and resources on this. So here I can say, PayPal is not recognized. Uh, PayPal is not recognized. Um, I can add some broader description if I want to, and then I can say uh, how severe the issue is. As every issue in the business is always critical, we will choose for critical. So what it will do now is it will go and uh, create an incident, and that incident I will then be able to assign a given lead. Um, you can also automate that to say, okay, this person needs to have a look at it. So here we can say that uh, Alvin is going to have a look at this issue. And then Alvin can show a bit on how to uh, reduce this given incident. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Matisse. So at this point in time, I'm going to take over, right? And as we can see here on the right hand side, we have some prefigured integration. So any update here will be posted to uh, a custom Slack channel that's named after this specific issue. And then I also have a, a link directly to a ticket being generated in Jira. So in once we really dig into the underlying root cause here and we go back and then update this to i'll do i'll do investigating and then we'll move over to resolve and i'll say fix fixed like that and then we click resolve and on the uh, on the back end now this will be propagated into jira so you always have an up-to-date uh status within jira so if we do a refresh on this one. You can see that it's marked as done. So that's kind of an end-to-end -end flow where we collaborate in terms of the, the different steps here and how you can use Soda in order to create tickets and make sure you keep track of, uh, of data quality. With that, uh, it's this one, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's this one. So up until now, we've been uh, talking a lot about more of the data consumer type use cases. So the other thing I mentioned in the beginning was that you can also use Soda within a pipeline. And I'm going to show you, talk you through a very brief example of this. So here to the, to the right hand side, we'll see a number of files. And then you can use Soda Core and the Spark 
portion of SOTA core to actually ap apply data quality checks directly on these files. And then within Airflow, in this example, you can choose to either stop the pipeline or just create, uh, uh, capture the metrics and display that in, in SOTA Cloud. And then there might be other steps where you insert this into another database. You'll do some joins using DBT, for example. And then you have one step at the end where you, before you actually release this to the consumers, you will run one set of checks again to make sure that you didn't lose any records or transform something in a, in a wrong way. Uh, so that's kind of how SOTA can play, play into that. And just to give you an example of what this would look like within Airflow, so we have one, uh, one a virtual operator first that checks the files uh, using the using the data frame support and then there's a dbt step and at the end we'll use soda sql to go against uh, the actual database and with that i think we can do five five minutes of q a well, before we go into that i did just one thing so if you think this is something that could be useful to you then um, the open source is, of course, open source. You just search for Soda Core, and then you can install it locally and get and get running. And there's also a free trial of Soda Cloud, so you can test that out for two weeks uh, to apply it to any data set that you have. And if you need that extended, please let us know, and we can we can make that happen. Uh, one more thing as well. So we have a booth, uh, and in that booth we do something very cool. You get to print your own T-shirts, like using. Um, AR glasses where you can kind of pull down your own design and get a custom unique t-shirt but there's a secret password for that and the password is sunshine otherwise you won't be able to print the t-shirt so sunshine cool uh, are there any questions the audience yes we got one here what data sources uh, uh, does uh so that handle, is it uh, data lake as well as uh, data warehouse? Uh? Yeah. So, <laughs> so you repeat the I'll question. repeat it for you. <laughs> You're the only one that can hear. <laughs> no, but we, which data sources we support. So we can okay. support, at the end of the day, we can support anything that you can send SQL to or that you can test using Spark. Uh, and the way it works is that uh, that's part of the open source as well. So it's really easy to extend if it is something that we're not currently have a, a, an out of the box support for, you can easily build your own. Mm -hmm. But it's yeah. like 17, something like that? Yeah, indeed. Like, like all of the, the biggest ones, let's say, like Snowflake, Databrake, Ratchet, BigQuery, and so on, but also a bit more of the old SQL Server, Postgres, MySQL, and so forth. Um, so those we support, there are there's a longer list that you can find on our docs, and then you can connect to Spark as well. Uh, to, so to Spark the data that <laughs> like if you would use it in a Databricks notebook uh, as an example. Uh, how, how do you uh, how does things work uh, at the back end? Do you send the query and use the um, like data source resources to run yes. the query? Yeah, indeed. So what we do is we all of the checks get translated to a SQL query or to Spark code, which is then pushed down to your d d data warehouse or data source. So we use the compute and the resources of the data source, right? Um, so that, that is how it's working. Yeah. 